What's up, guys? I wanted to hop on here and talk about trauma for a little bit. I wanted to specifically talk about the connection between mechanism of injury and index of suspicion. And so you guys um, have talked about mechanism of injury this whole time, and there are a variety of forms of mechanisms of injury from falls to motor vehicle collisions to diving accidents, gunshot wounds, stab wounds, assaults, battery, things like that. All right, They're all different types of mechanisms of injury. And once you've identified the mechanism, you have to then think about the severity or the significance of that mechanism of injury. How significant was it? For a normal adult, um, a fall three times our height would be considered significant. But that being said, take someone's age into context. If someone was 88, 90 years old, and they had a history of osteoporosis, a fall from standing height uh, would be deemed significant. Um, a gunshot wound, a penetrating injury, where and, and where on the body was penetrated, all right? What was used? How many times? How far away? Um, a penetrating injury to the, to the face, the central region, um, the thorax, uh, would all be deemed very significant, okay? Um, with a MVC, think about um, the damage to the vehicles, okay? So you arrive on scene, are, are the vehicles okay? Are they upright? Um, were the airbags deployed? Were the passengers restrained? Do they self-extricate? Uh, do you see fluids leaking? Do you see the, the cars um, smoking or on fire? Do you see spider webbing to the windshield? How fast were the cars going? All that, was there any intrusion to the, to the passenger compartment? All that plays a role into deciding how significant this was. And so that being said, the MOI, the mechanism of injury and the significance of it is connected to the index of suspicion. If you have a very significant mechanism of injury, that will lead you to believe that you are highly suspicious of underlying injuries of the patient. The patient would have sustained, possibly sustained, underlying injuries and multi-system trauma. And that being said, if you are highly suspicious, if your index of suspicion is high, you're going to reduce and minimize your on-scene time and you want to get them to definitive care, which is most likely a level one trauma center. Okay? And so if you arrive to an MVC and one of the vehicles is on its side um, and they were going 45, 50 miles per hour, they were not restrained, and a patient self-extricated and they're walking towards you and they're alert and oriented times four, no complaints of head, neck, or back pain, no amnesia, but you're looking at the scene and you're like, this is a very significant mechanism of injury that will prompt you to be highly suspicious of underlying injuries and warrant, it warrants a head-to-toe assessment, all right? And with that head-to-toe assessment, a lot of that is visual. That DCAP ETLS, a lot of that is visual. But that being said, we're in class. We're in a testing situation. You have to verbalize everything that you're visualizing. And so it might seem like it's taking longer than usual. But I assure you, we're giving you 15 minutes. 15 minutes is a lot of time and plenty of time to get it done. And so I hope that helps making the connection between mechanism of injury and index of suspicion. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks.